Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to do our past life reading. Um, I know I promised I was going to do it a couple days ago, but for some reason I had to take a couple days off. Like I just felt exhausted. So I don't like to read when I feel that way and that doesn't happen very often. But um, so I apologize for making the ones who've been waiting for it wait. <laughs> uh, but today's the day, and I feel like that just means it's divine timing. So what we're doing, um, the reason why I'm doing this reading is really to relate back to the Twin Flame Soulmate reading I did. Um, because I feel like, you know, as soulmates, Twin Flames, you're definitely connected before. You're always connected, you know, eternally. Um, but what I'm really looking for is like, what happened in a past life that may have followed you into this lifetime? You know, there could be some lessons, um, definitely different journeys. I really love doing a past life reading. So we are going to use a couple different decks for this reading. And again, I would suggest that you watch the Twin Flame reading um, because I, I just have a feeling it's going to relate back to it. It's really what inspired me to do this reading was that was the twin flame reading and again i say twin flames but it can be soulmates it doesn't have to be twin flames please understand that you know love is love but this is this is love that has been with you before and you with them um so anyways let's go ahead and begin we're going to use mother mary for her beautiful words of wisdom but we will do this at the end of the reading um, we will use the Gilded Trail to clarify or go deeper. We are going to use the Past Life Tarot. And this is, we're going to be using this deck to read the Past Life. Um, get as much as we can. Understand as much as we can. And then we're going to move into the Current Life with the Psychic Tarot. I like these two decks together. So, Past Life Tarot. This is going to be your past life, you know, um, and it doesn't have to be like your your last past life. It's just a journey that the two of you have had together before. What went on? We're going to dig in deep. And then, you know, how is it affecting or even what lessons, you know, there are to learn in this lifetime. So I feel like we always bring at least the wisdom of the past life with us, but sometimes it takes us time to really figure that out. So that's what I'm trying to do, help you figure that out. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move these aside. And we're going to start with the past life. I'm going to bring the lid down. Not quite that much. There we go. Let's go ahead and give them a couple shuffles. By the way, I do spend time before I begin a reading, just shuffling the cards, kind of meditating, opening myself up. I do read through our spirit guides. My spirit guides connect to your spirit guides. That's why these type of readings, I feel like you find in divine timing. You know, you may not find it in, until six months from now or six days from now um, or even six years. I just feel like when the timing is right, the reading will be put before you in some way. All right, let's go ahead and give him a cut. And just gonna take a moment, just calm our minds, just kind of release the outcome, be open to whatever messages want to come in certainly feel comfortable asking your spirit guides remember before you came into this earth time, this lifetime you have a whole spiritual team that was assigned to you so use them <laughs> that's what they're there for use them so feel comfortable asking for like some type of confirmation i feel like I feel like, you, you know, I really feel like you'll know if a reading is for you or not. Like, you'll feel it in some way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this type of reading, I have quite a few of them done. I think I have a playlist called Past Life Reading. So, let's say this one, you're like, mm, I'm not sure. 
you can go check out that playlist because and check out the title if it calls to you then watch it um you know if you feel called to it okay let's go ahead and let's begin These are the type of readings that it does take a little time for them to like unfold. I feel like they're telling a story and they need the proper time to unfold. I put no time limit on them. All right. Ships. Ships. You know, it's interesting. I just got goosebumps. And I'm not sure why. Like maybe I was on a ship in a past life. Ships. Spirituality and religion. I'm noticing how that flame is lit. Spirituality and religion. Finances. Interesting. I feel like someone was discovering new lands within these ships. Like, I feel like we were, you know, there was a group of us. And together, we're exploring new lands. You know, maybe that has a little to do with the finances. Um, you know, it's almost like, are we seeking, are we seeking like hidden treasures you know, in spirituality and religion, right in the middle, I almost feel like whoever was on this ship, you are the spiritual being. Um, I'm not really feeling the religion part of it. I'm feeling more of the spirituality, like, you know, maybe that's even, you know, it's funny. I get this feeling, hey, listen, maybe it is saying like where on this ship, you know, as we were traveling, um, you know, we did something of a spiritual nature and maybe that is how we made, I want to say our coins, our coins. We have the arts. Interesting. Look at this guitar. I'm only saying that because it looks like the guitar I have over in the corner. And that guitar divinely came to me. There's a whole story behind it. Um, if you're new, you probably don't know the story. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to like retell the story right now. But many of you know, like that story, that guitar came to me in really a, quite a mysterious way. Um, but a very spiritual way. And I just noticed that guitar. Hmm. Imprisonment and slavery or slavery under ships. Food and hunger. Interesting. I'm going to get them all out and then we're going to just feel the energy of each one of them or the story they want to tell. Well, that card did not want to be shuffled orphan. Looking right back at food and hunger. Right under finances. You know, I get this feeling that we're on this ship. And I do feel like this ship is exploring new lands. And maybe it's not something that I even asked for. You know, I, I almost get this feeling like, um, like maybe my parents put me on that ship. And when I say me, I mean us. Um, you know, but it's almost like my parents put me on that ship um, to give me a better life. But yet, 
in the same breath, I feel like, you, you know, I don't feel like it was, I feel like it was hard. It was difficult. And I feel like someone through this experience really well, you know, she's looking right back at food and hunger. And I feel like someone used their spirituality, but as an art to, and that's probably why I was saying coins, like I probably didn't get much, but it's what helped me buy the food, you know, like the coin, like I needed to give these coins to whoever was the commander of the ship to be able to eat. And I get this feeling like, like that is not, that was not my purpose. Well, it was probably a purpose, but that's not what, you know, whoever ship, whoever the captain of the ship was, let's say, you know, the commanders and what have you. I don't feel like you and I, and I, and I almost feel like you were hidden, you know, like you were hidden, like, like, like someone put you on that ship and maybe you weren't meant to be seen, but yet you were. And I feel like then it's almost like you have like this natural psychic ability. Um, but you used it through, you know, because I feel like if I used it in a way where, or I had to be careful how I used it, almost like I couldn't say that I was a psychic because that was frowned upon. So what I did is I used it through, let's just say music. And I feel like through the music is how I earned my money. Wow. Okay. We have, well, that's probably why I was feeling that a scribe or writer under the arts. You know, I get, I just feel like you can tell people's fortunes, but yet at the same time, I got to be careful how I do it, how I say it. Now, you know, it's shown a little girl as an orphan, but I, you know, and listen, you may have been, because I do feel like you were put on this ship. And I don't feel like you had any say-so. Yet, I also feel this psychic ability within you, you know, this spirituality within you. And again, I'm not really feeling religion. Maybe religion on their side, as in where, you know, let's say I am, I have these psychic, you know, like I'm a medium or what have you. Um, but I can't say that. I can't say that because it's it would be frowned upon. Um, you know, maybe even then I would be thrown into this, you know, this imprisonment. Um, but I, I'm not surprised a scribe or writer came out because I feel that. I definitely feel that. All right. Well, we got a couple more trees. And trust and faith. Trust and faith. You know, it's like your angels were helping to guide you. It's like your angels were protecting you. It's making me feel like like Archangel Michael. You know, your protector. Probably not just in your last lifetime, but also in this lifetime. And trees to me, I feel like are wisdom. You know. They've been around much longer than we've been around. So they, they carry the sense of wisdom and knowledge. And again, I feel like there's this, this certain ability within you. And some of you may, you know, you may say like in this lifetime, but I don't really feel that. Well, maybe you haven't allowed yourself to open up to that. Because again, this is you in a past lifetime and moving into a present. So. What's coming to my mind, and even before Scribe Writer came out, is that you have, you know, this psychic ability. And I couldn't, you know, and it's almost like I'm, I can predict the future. Um, and I do feel like people on the ship aim to you. 
Um, but I feel like you had to use it in a certain way. Otherwise, you know, there was a chance you could have been thrown off or thrown into like a cell, that type of thing. Um, but I feel like you did it to earn your food. Yet, I also feel like, I feel like the people on that ship, they did come to you. And listen, maybe you did play guitar and maybe you sang like what you were feeling. You put it in like lyrics. Mm, interesting. Some of you may have these, you know, some of you may feel like you, um, like maybe you wanted to be a writer in this lifetime. Maybe you wanted to be a musician in this lifetime. Um, and I definitely feel like a lot of you who are watching, I feel like you do carry these psychic abilities, whether you've honed them in or not. I feel like you didn't have a choice. It's almost like the trees... The trees would whisper to you. The trees would whisper, and it's really the angels, you know. And I and I feel like a certain, like I really feel Archangel Michael, um, but I feel like really as protecting you, almost like whispering to you, you know. Don't talk about your psychic abilities. Instead, put it in a different form. Put it in a form of like writing it in a, in a way, like in a story form or, you know, playing it on the guitar or, you know, through your music. And it is your spirituality. And I feel like that is how, you know, you made enough money at least to eat. Interesting. It's like wisdom beyond your years. And she's looking right back at this prison, like knowing. And it's interesting because she's a child, but I feel like she's got the wisdom far beyond her years. Hmm. I get a feeling in this lifetime, some of you may have held back on these certain... Um, what do I want to say? Like these certain, these certain callings that I feel are just a natural app. But yet, again, listen, you know, let's say that, let's say that you know you're psychic, um, but in this lifetime, it still can be frowned upon. So you may be afraid to bring it out and it may simply say another way of doing that is through music is through, you know, a musical instrument. You know, I feel like, I feel like music can save the soul. And listen, maybe that's what this little girl is doing. She's like helping to save other souls, but in a, in a way where the people, you know, they feel it. But they can't put a name to it. But yet I feel like she can tell she can tell their fortune, whether she speaks that or not. And I feel like one of the reasons why is because she carries the wisdom like of these trees. You know, someone who just knows, even if I'm young, like I know that I've been rooted here for for many, many many, many years, many, many lifetimes. And I feel like, you know, I feel like as a soul, I feel like I was meant to suffer a little, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like that, but I do feel like um, it's almost like my soul knew that it had to suffer a little bit. But I'm not really looking at it in that, like, I don't, like, hmm. 
I guess other people would look at it like that. But like if I'm this little girl, I'm not looking at it like I'm suffering because, you know, I know I have the wisdom. I have, you know, it's again, like I feel my archangels. I feel protected. But I also know that I have to be careful at the same time. But I definitely feel this is how you earned, you know, those coins to, and I feel like you didn't get much food, but you got enough to survive. You know, and I'm, and I'm picking up also that some of you may have been, like you were on this ship and you may have been, um, you know, I feel like I want to say like on the lower level, like imprisoned. But still along for the ride. And it is because you could speak someone's future that you were released. You know, it's interesting. It's almost like I feel that people on the ship, like let's say the higher ups, they don't want to recognize what your purpose was. They don't want to recognize that, you know, even those who came to you and asked for, again, I feel like as a little girl, still, they came to you asking for your advice because you could predict it. And I feel like for a lot of you, music in this lifetime is very healing for you. Some of you may hear certain songs and it may evoke certain feelings and you may not know why. This is probably why. Some of you are, be, you know, like you have this urge to write and maybe you haven't done that. But yet, I feel like if you do, again, I feel like the archangels are going to help you. It's almost like they're going to give you the wisdom. Like the words will start flowing. I just need to clear my mind. And maybe that's also where music comes in. Interesting. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Phobias. Wow. That would make sense because I do feel there's a real spirituality about this past life. Um, but I also feel like there is a, um, a danger in that. You know, it reminds me of like Salem, where witches got hung for just being who they were. Um, but also, this girl seems wise enough. To know to cover it up. When I say cover it up, she's still being authentic, but she's doing it in a way where it's being received in a in a way, you know, again, I don't feel like she's getting a lot, but she's getting at least breadcrumbs, let's say. I feel like there's also someone out there who you're either are writing a book or you're thinking about writing a book and you don't know why you have this urge and it may you may just start writing work you know, like writing and what you're actually writing is about a past lifetime you know what we want to remember is when we're born we're born with amnesia and there's a reason for that. You know, it's it would be very difficult to take like all the hardships of our past lives into this new life. Plus, there's new experiences, new things that, that our soul wants to learn. But I feel like we still have that wisdom. We still have that recognition. We just sometimes can't put a name to it. She's a natural. And she knows it. And the archangels know that. And I feel like this gift that she has 
it is what has set her free. It is what has allowed her to come, let's say, to the upper deck and eat. Interesting. All right, let's bring in the psychic trial. And let's see how this moved forward. It's interesting because we're not really talking about anyone other than this girl. Um, though when we clarify, it may go, it'll go deeper. I feel like it'll, it'll go deeper. But let's go ahead and add in the current lifetime and then we'll bring in the Gilded Tarot. You know, I'm, I'm saying this is relating to the Twin Flames, um, but this may also be just so you understand you, you know, and the things that you've been through and even some of the things that you haven't done in this lifetime, but you felt this calling to. This may release you from the restrictions, make you feel freer to do it. Especially if, like, you want to write, you know, or, you know, it says the arts, but that guitar. And there's a keyboard behind it, which I love playing keyboard. Um, but that guitar, it's it looks just like the guitar. It's in my room. And that guitar came to me from heaven above. Destiny. Destiny. Hope. This is a star. Interesting, you got two major arcanas back to back. The star is mirroring spirituality and religion. Destiny is mirroring ships. The star is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And that may be why I feel like some of you have been holding back on certain gifts that you have. And listen, you know, especially as a writer, you may not know. You know, you may say to yourself like, hmm, I could just picture myself, you know, out in the countryside writing a book. But what would I write about? Well, I feel like that's where your archangels come in because I feel like you are this same little girl, whether you're a male or female. Some of you may not have had it too easy in this lifetime. And I don't know, maybe things are going to start changing. Look at this, Eight of Swords. Interesting. So, trapped in fear, literally what it says, trapped in fear, imprisonment, imprisonment, trapped in fear. It's almost like I carried that energy forward with me. But I feel like this is more of a fear of doing certain things. Again, the star, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, but it's sitting right next to your will, your destiny. And to me, that means even this energy, which is a self-created prison, that it was probably meant to be too. And if that's the case, what I'm meant to learn from this is that I can save myself from this. I can uncreate this prison. And really what that brings you to is a state of freedom. Well, hello, spiritual union. So, soulmates. So I have a feeling somewhere along the way, as this girl grew up, she must have met her soulmate. I love it when the cards just come out like that on their own. Look at this, emotional loss. This is the Five of Cups. Interesting. 
you know, and mm, you know, when I when I'm feeling I'm feeling this sense of longing. But I'm not even sure what I'm longing for. And I have a feeling for some of you, it's to find that little girl within you again. Again, this little girl, she was wise enough to use her natural talents to free herself. Even though, you know, she didn't become, you know, let's say a royalty, but she could feed herself. And it is of her own doing. It wasn't because someone else, well, you know, like came down and tried to save her. She saved herself. And that's really what the Eight of Swords is about, saving oneself. Eight of Swords is about creating barriers, you know, phobias. Instead of facing them, I put these walls around me. And it can be relating to love. Interesting is the soulmates are also mirroring the wheel. What am I holding? Emotional loss. I feel like some of you are longing for that little girl. Now, many of you know what I'm going to say. Because in the five of cups, first of all, it's a five. You know, eights are about a new beginning. The wheel means there's potential movement. But I do feel like first, I got to free myself. And it could relate back to these phobias. You know, maybe, you know, I, I, it's like, it's almost like this little girl's like, don't feel sorry for me. Because she felt very blessed. And she felt wise beyond her years. I almost feel like she just, she couldn't be all that she could be. She knew exactly how much to give and what to hold back. So I feel like she found her own way with the help of the Archangels. Her whole spiritual team, I should say. And I feel like this is saying you can find your way also. You know, she could have stayed imprisoned. But she didn't. She used that wisdom. And for some of you, it's like your angels are trying to help you to free yourself. Because remember, no one can free yourself from the Eight of Swords except for you. Why? Because it's self-created. And maybe I just don't know why. Well, this might have a little bit to do with it. Now, it says emotional loss, but I have to tell you, I feel like there's a sense of longing. You know, like, like, why can't my life be a certain way? But yet I feel like it can be. Now, when this person, you know, the Five of Cups, the danger within the Five of Cups is we can get lost in this energy. And this is when we start thinking about everything we've lost, everything that's gone wrong, like everybody is against us. But yet, we need to find ourselves in this energy. And when this person does, well, there's two cups that sit behind this person. They don't know it. But here are the two cups. And it's like, when I uncreate this prison, there is this, well, it literally says spiritual union. And it's also connected to your will. But that also means this was meant to happen, right? It's all been part of your destiny. The Nine of Swords, Suffering in Silence. So we've gone from the Eight of Swords to the Nine of Swords. Some of you, I feel like you are holding yourselves back. You know, the Nine of Swords talks about unnecessary worry. You know, I do like this image, though, because normally you'll see, like, 
this person surrounded by swords, but this person looking out into the world. So for some of you, I feel like this reflection, nine to me means reflection, but final reflection. Like, what am I afraid of? What's holding me back? Am I holding myself back? What dreams and wishes do I have? And why can't I let them be? Why can't I bring them to me? You can. You know, and sometimes you got to step out of the way. Again, because I feel, I feel the angels. I feel the archangels. I feel their protection over you. I feel like they've always protected you. You just need to find the strength of this little girl. And then the seven of pentacles. Patience and planning. Patience and planning. And listen, if I'm in this, let's say, fearful state over doing something or even being, you know, I feel like I need to I need to be true to me first. You know, I need to understand that I can I can have dreams come true. They may look different, right? Because again, she held back. She knew exactly how to use her gifts where her gifts didn't get her in trouble, right? They fed her and that seems good enough. Like, like as a little girl, I feel like that's all I wanted. But then maybe when this ship finally hits land, well, that may be when the soulmates entered because I do feel her young here. Anyway, patience and planning. So if there's something I want to do, let's say I want to be a writer, but I just don't know, do I have that talent? Whatever it is, whatever wish that you may have, this may say sometimes, you know, like I feel like for some reason I'm seeing in my mind's eye like a pro and con list. Like, what's the pros? What's the cons? And in the list of the cons, what can I change and what can I not change? And the things I cannot change, I just got to let go. I have to go with the flow. You know, the Seven of Pentacles to me really is your tree of life. And certain seeds come to fruition in certain times. You know, I relate it often to the apple tree. Like, I don't want to pick an apple before the apple is ripe. But I also get this sense of, why am I not trusting in myself? Now, it could be other people. But yet, we still have to learn how to break free from that. I feel like this reading right now is really saying to take on the image of this little girl because it could not have been easy. But yet she found her way. She found a way. And again, I don't feel like she used all her gifts at that time. She she used her gifts in a way that wouldn't get her in trouble so that she could eat. And I feel like at that time, that's all I was thinking about. I wouldn't think about my future. I was just thinking about, I need to eat today. Anyway, I don't know why I'm saying all that. But it is coming under trapped in fear. So for some of you, it could simply mean like putting a plan in place for yourself. Even like, you know, step by step by step. But also letting go of, you know, things needing to be exactly the way that you think they need to be. And remember, you have this protection over you. And that's another reason why we really don't need to create these self-created prisons. We, we are protected. All right. I'm just going to take one off the top of the deck. 
Look at this. Patience. This is temperance. And yes, it is patience. But, you know, it's like patience to allow that apple to ripen. Don't try to pick that apple before it's ripe. It'll just be bitter. This is also about divine timing. It is coming right under the soulmates and coming under soulmate union, spiritual union. Let's be clear about that. Spiritual union, spirituality. It's like that has followed you into this lifetime. But do you know that? Do you know that you are a spiritual being? Having human experiences. Hello, universe. So, in the universe's energy, I feel like it's all about your spirituality. Some of you, I feel like you have some spiritual gifts. And listen, when I say spiritual gifts, it can mean a million different things. It's going to be different for each person. But I feel like this is the most spiritual time in your life. And I feel like when the universe shows, this is the world, by the way. Your spirituality is alive. This is the next chapter. So that does tell me you have the ability to free yourself. Because I feel like that's first and foremost. Like, like I can wish and hope and pray that my dreams come true. But until I put down these walls and take off these blindfolds, even for the things that didn't go right, you know, and I know a lot of people don't like when I say this, but I feel like even the hard things, and maybe even especially the hard things, are the things that we were meant that our soul wanted to go through. Why? Because, you know, our soul is looking for adventure. And sometimes that adventure is the things that I ha I can overcome. And then the gratitude but the next chapter, right by the wheel, by the way. I feel like there is a phobia that may have followed. Yet, as I say that, I don't feel this girl's got any phobias. I feel like she knows who she is. She knows her gifts. Even as a child, she knows her gifts. But she also knows how to use them and how they, or... Yes, how to use them, but also, you know, like maybe I, I couldn't feel free to be all that I can be, you know, and I'm really noticing that flame again. And I feel like that's tying back to the soulmate. So we'll see. I feel like a lot of you like the arts in many different formats. I feel like they set you free. They can set you free. All right. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And the one thing we're, I'm, I'm definitely looking for is synchronicities. And the story. Give them one more shuffle. Oh, slipped right out of my hand. You know, what is Archangel Michael asking you to do? Have trust and faith. That means within yourself. Let's not even, you know, let's leave the soulmates out of it for a second. First and foremost, you got to find it within yourself. And, you know, some of you may have this longing, like, like you don't feel fulfilled. But I feel like there's a reason. And I feel like this Eight of Swords and the Nine of Swords is a big part of it. Though I feel like there's every opportunity for some of these dreams to come true. And excuse me when I say, but I feel like sometimes we have to get out of our, get out of our own way. Interesting how the Seven of Pentacles is also mirroring finances. 
And this may say that, you know, if this is something that's going to take, let's say, money that, you know, I I really want to do in this lifetime, maybe just putting a little bit back here and there whenever I can. All right. I don't think I cut them. I like to cut them and introduce them into the reading. All right. So we're going to start at the beginning, but of course we're going to read it as a whole because this is really just telling is telling us the whole story. Look at that. The last card down here is temperance and the first card in the past lives is also temperance. Divine timing. You know, that tells you how active divine is in your life. I feel like this little girl, she's had the patience that temperance is asking for. She knows that she needs to hold back certain things just for now, right? I feel like once I hit land, then I feel like her life is going to take a change. We'll see, but that's, but that's what I'm feeling. And I love it sitting right next to, you know, I keep saying Archangel Michael, and I do feel Archangel Michael is an energy. Um, but I also want to say, like, you know, again, you have archangels, angels, spirit guides that are, that are assigned to you. We have the Five of Swords. Interesting, because I feel like that's where the little girl knows that she has to hold back all the gifts that she has. Why? Because it's looked at in a toxic way. And that's why it keeps bringing my mind to like, you know, like Salem and the witches and them being hung. And, and I don't feel that, though that may be also someone's lifetime. Um, but I feel like she knows, like I've got to hold. It's almost, and, and I feel like the people, not all of them, but those on the ship, uh, you know, I don't feel like they're a great group of, and I feel mostly men, um, though I do feel there are some women on the ship. But I do feel like men also come to this little girl and it's, and it's almost like for guidance. Maybe it's a little bit of a secret. We have the emperor, interesting, over the finances, to literally speak of an emperor. Hmm. We have, interesting, the six of cups. You know what I feel a lot of times? When we have this feeling of longing, or we're in this Eight of Swords energy. You know, maybe it's love that we're looking for. But what we have to learn to do is free ourselves first, right? Get over these phobias because we can. Because these dreams can manifest. Again, they may look different than what I wish for, but they'll probably be better. Um, I don't I forget where I was. At. Oh, I was going to say, and I feel like a lot of times... When we allow ourselves to get lost in our craft, we start to meet our soul family. And I have a feeling within those within that craft, um, and I do feel like this is once that ship has reached land, you know, I feel like the Six of Cups. And it's interesting because these are two little kids. So there may be a little boy that was also on that ship. I think there was. I think there was a little boy in that ship. And I feel like they were friends. And I feel like this little girl took quick took care of this little boy in a way. And I mean that in like in comfort, like giving comfort to this boy. We have the Queen of Swords. Over imprisonment or slavery. Look at this. We have the lovers. We have the lovers. It's over food and hunger. 
but it's also it also has a star below it, but it also has the nine of swords below that. Um, if you notice, I'm not giving signs, and that's because I really want you to learn to do tarot without thinking about the signs. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want you to get lost in like, okay, so the emperor is a card of Aries, so that must mean that my soulmate or my lover is in Aries. I don't, no. I mean, I'm not going to say no. It could be, but I'm certainly not going to limit that. You know, also, it's interesting because the lover showed up in the twin flame reading. And what I said about it was you could see the divine feminine's energy and the divine masculine's energy was like in spirit form, right? But she could feel him. He just wasn't there yet. It's almost like this little girl when she grows up. You know, it's like this little boy and this little girl may have become separated. But I just have a feeling they're going to find their way back. Because why? Because they can feel each other's energy. They can feel each other's energy. You know, this is chemistry. But as a child, that's not what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at it as like chemistry. I'm looking at it as like, like, even though we're not blood related, it's like brother and sister type of energy. Like you are my brother. You are my sister. And then we grow up. And I have a feeling. And then you find each other. Queen of Swords, to me, represents your voice, your truth. And maybe that's one of the phobias you have in this lifetime. Not trusting within your own voice, your own truth. You know, this little girl now is looking right back at the lovers. And then the other six on the table is the six of cups. So they're connected. We have the seven of swords under the emperor. And then look at this. We have the wheel. So you have the wheel in the past life. You have the wheel in the present life. It's interesting because I do feel like the emperor is an emperor. And I don't feel like it, this emperor is a loving emperor. Um, I feel like this emperor is almost like, um, you know, I wish I knew more about history because I feel like this is giving me a time period, but I can't really pinpoint it. Um, but I do feel like this emperor is like where... You know, it's like everyone's got to pay the emperor. And I don't feel good about this emperor. And I almost feel like this girl knows I can't let the emperor or let's just say, let's just say the captain or maybe this is where we're heading. Like, I can't, I can't say it out loud. Not yet. I feel no fear with her, though. I'm not going to say that she's not suffering, right? But I feel like she finds her way out of that. And I don't feel a lot of fear. I don't really feel any fear. You know what I feel more? Is it's, it's almost like as she gets like these breadcrumbs, she then shares them with this little boy. And they are connected by the wheel. Wow. Okay, let's keep going. We have the page of swords over the wheel. 
It feels like communication. And again, I'm looking at the lovers and how the divine feminine is feeling the energy of the divine masculine, though they're not in physical form together yet. Now, I feel like, yes, they're born. Both are born of that lifetime and both are born of this lifetime. It's just that they haven't come together. So I feel like the Page of Swords may speak about, you know, some type of communication that may just surprise you. But yet, I also want to say, because it's coming under the Queen of Swords, you know, and it can talk about the evolution of this queen. Where, yeah, again, like this, this little girl knew I needed to hold back certain, you know, certain parts of myself. Because, it, uh, because I knew it only get me thrown back into this prison. And maybe the little boy was imprisoned, but yet she seems to like sneak him breadcrumbs. And I feel the evolution of this queen as in the gaining of her voice. But I also feel this may talk about communication. Um, because to me, a page can speak about what's in the atmosphere. Just like the masculine. Right? I can feel it. I can feel it. But it's not quite here yet. I also want to say, don't be afraid if you feel you know who I'm talking about. And maybe you're not really connected at this point, but let's just say you're connected like on social media. Like, don't be afraid to reach out. Even if you're just starting a conversation like, hey, I was just thinking about you. How you doing? Because that could open up a whole new door. You know, it's right over the wheel. And we have the world right here. So it is a new chapter. We have the, um, the wheel also right here. It's like the wheel from the past lifetime has moved into the present lifetime. And then look at this, the world again. Now it's right over hope. Which is about your wishes, your dreams. And your hopes. But it is about bringing them to fruition. You know the one thing you want to remember when you see the star. Is this isn't about miracles. This is about you working hand in hand with divine. This is about you uncreating these prisons. Taking off these blindfolds. And being open to universal energy. You know putting a plan may be in place, maybe even putting some finances back, whatever, whatever it takes, it takes. But I feel like there's, you can bring this about. You can bring it about. Maybe you need to trust, again, that you are a spiritual being. Maybe you need to remember that you are a spiritual being having these human experiences. And there's nothing you're going through in this lifetime that you haven't already gone through and overcome. But I don't remember that. You're not meant to. Because you're meant to find your way in this lifetime. Well, look who just got off the ship. Look who's now at land. By the way, this is coming over the Eight of Swords. Completely, totally different energy. This is the energy of optimism. This is saying to your guides, to your archangels, to God, I trust in divine timing. I trust that my ships will come in. And I'm going to be grateful. You know, just like this little girl was grateful for the breadcrumbs. And even just the breadcrumbs, she still shared them. 
right? She could have kept them all for herself because I don't feel like she got a lot, but she didn't. She shared them with the little boy who I feel like is her future lover. And it's weird I'm saying lover, right? As a little girl and a little boy, but let's just say future love. It's also touching this little girl's energy. And then look at this. Well, my friend, this is the marriage card. This is a commitment card. This is true commitment. And it just so happens that in this deck, it says spiritual union. And I swear to God, I didn't even, like, when I pick a deck, I'm not thinking, like, oh, what are the cards, you know, like, what what's the wording on a card? I don't think that. I let my intuition just pick what decks want to be used. So, my favorite love card. Because this is where two are truly making a commitment to each other. And listen, everybody there wants to be there. Optimism. I know my love will come in. I just know that. I'm going to let go of these phobias. I'm starting to understand more and more what this longing is coming from. But I also got to get out of my own way. And that's not to put blame on you. Let me grab a drink real quick. That's not to put any blame on you. Because each in their own time. It's under the will. And it's under the six of cups. So do I feel like it's talking about this little and boy this little boy and little girl when they grow up? Them loving each other? Them that it turned from pure love into romantic love? It's exactly what I feel. exactly what I feel and by the way it's also mirroring the wheel and it's connected to the wheel and temperance patience and divine timing is right below it three of wands it's like I'm letting go of all these these limited ideas that I have right that that human brain the human thoughts Put before us, and I'm letting my spirituality lead the way. All right, well, we're going to take what's face up first. We have the Eight of Wands. You know, to me, this is what I think about it, bring about. It's like the law of attraction. And right now, it's mirroring temperance. Right? Divine timing. But we also remember that it matches the eight of swords. Another eight. Self-created prison. And if I'm manifesting from that energy, am I not just manifesting? Well, literally, it's showing it going from the eight of swords to the nine of swords. So... Again, I feel like, am I not in my own way? Am I not in my own way? And listen, I've been in my own way before quite a few times. This is also fast-moving energy, though. You know, it it's it's like, in a way, it's comfort to let you know that the ability to manifest can happen very quickly. You know, I hate to always tell you about Sam and I's story, but just the way the two of us came together. Listen, we were the young boy and girl. And then we became the man and the woman. 40 years after the fact. And now we are in union. So 
when I say things can happen that you do not expect, just believe me. Look at this, the death card right over the nine of swords. What door do I need to close? The door of fear. The door of fear. And what happens when I close that door? Then there is a rebirth. Then there is a rebirth, my dear. And the world is right above it. And the lovers is right above that. You know, I feel like this is one of the major lessons we have to learn in life is that not all things are going to work out in our favor. And we really have to learn when a chapter is over and it's time to close that door. You know, maybe I wished, really wished that something turned out this way, but maybe divine has something much better in store for you. Three of Wands, that's exactly the energy you're taking on. I'm just going to trust. I'm going to trust that what's meant to find me will find me. I'm not doing nothing in this energy, right? I'm in the energy of optimism. Maybe, maybe I bring out that guitar. Maybe I start writing that book. Maybe I reach out to someone that I've been wanting to reach out to. Close the door to fear. Phobias. Know when a chapter is just over. You know, and if I just think of my own life and I think about the different relationships I've been in where I thought I was head over heels in love and then <laughs> and then that didn't last. You know, thank God I closed those doors. Because if I never closed that door, then would I be able to be in the blessed blessed energy I'm in right now? I'm not saying my life is perfect. It's not. But I do know I was blessed. All right, I think these came first. Hmm, okay, the tower. But, you know, I feel like this already happened. This is energy already happened. You know, with the Seven of Swords here, you could have certainly dealt with, first of all, Seven of Swords can be one's own thoughts, like lying to myself. Why am I believing those thoughts? You know, we can lie to ourselves. It's almost like we need to train our own brain and take away the power of these towers. Closing that door takes away the power of that tower. Wow. I feel like that's the perfect energy to come out right now, the Six of Swords. Because this is you saying, okay, I am realizing what and who has been toxic to me. What and who has held me back, even as myself. You know, temporarily, this can be difficult energy, but it's only temporary. This is much like this ship. You're about to strike land. Like this ship is about to reach the beach and it's beautiful. It is the grass on the other side. It is the realization. You know, I feel like this energy is truly what can set you free. And I feel like it's a combination of a few different things. Other people's thoughts and ideas and things that they've told you. Their limited thoughts you know, that they put upon you, but then you bought it, you know, and then those limited thoughts you put upon yourself. Just energy that's just not been benefiting you. This is you realizing it. You know, I feel like divine 
Because remember, temperance is about divine timing. But I feel like a lot of the time, in a lot of the readings, I feel like divine is waiting on us. It's almost like tick-tock, tick-tock. The wheel's ready to move, tick-tock. The chapters are ready to open. By the way, two worlds, two wheels, two lovers. They're just spiritual team. And what are they doing? They're calling you to the present moment. Why? Because this is where we send your signs. This is how you can have a rebirth. When you can't trust in yourself, trust in us. Pulling your energy back to the present moment. The Eight of Swords and Nine of Swords, it's all about the past. It's all the things that went wrong in the past. And maybe you blame yourself. Well, forgive yourself. You know, maybe you didn't know better. I can say that in a lot of relationships I've been in. Like, I just didn't know better then. And I had some bad relationships. Look at this. Connected to the Five of Cups. Boy, do I feel like this is talking about the soulmates. Like, I feel like your spiritual team is saying, as long as you stay lost in this energy, you're not going to find those two cups. You're not going to notice them. You're not going to see the signs. You know, judgment is coming over, is coming under the death card. But also the fear of the Nine of Swords, which means unnecessary fear. Let's not forget that. Interesting. King of Swords. And we have the Queen of Swords up there. Now, I'm not even reading the sign. I'm just reading like-minded energy. Look at this. You know... This is why I love doing tarot. And it's it's almost like I don't even want to give it the name of tarot. I just feel like I'm just reading lives. But look at this. Soulmates. And then hello, victory and success. And by the way, it's coming over the six of swords. This is where you are saying, I'm letting go of that toxicity. Doesn't mean that I'm jumping right into something. Maybe I'm going to take it step by step. Maybe it just means I'm going to give up. I'm going to get out of my way. What a beautiful, difficult, but beautiful reading. You know, I don't know if I said this, but I think I did in the beginning where, um, like, after I did the Twin Flame reading, like, I felt like, I, well, I took two days off. And it is because I give all of my energy to a reading. Like, I completely open myself up. And sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of hardships and and I, I can feel, you know, I can feel those who are stuck. And I want to help free you. You know, and listen, it, things are going to happen differently for different people. But I feel like some of these messages are really for all of us. Soulmates right next to the King of Swords or the Queen of Swords right here. Page of Swords right underneath that. Right over the wheel. That opens up this next chapter. And this next chapter has the lovers connected to it. Well, this wheel also has this beautiful commitment connected to it. It's also connected back to the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is connected to this little girl. You were wise beyond your years. And you still are. You still are. 
Okay, I'm not even going to try to overread this. I feel like this was so clear. I feel like the I feel like the title is going to be the breadcrumbs that fed these lovers. I don't even know. Let's take Mother Mary over the reading. Let's get her words of wisdom. And yes, the Twin Flame reading is what really sparked the idea of me doing this reading. But I feel like this is not only about love, this is about life. Whoa. Okay, we got a lot, but we're going to take them. I never refuse Mother Mary's cards. Forgiveness. You know, it's interesting. Sam and I just had a discussion yesterday. <clears throat> and we were talking about forgiveness. And, um, you know, he grew up in a big Italian family. And um, he was the youngest of uh, seven kids. Um, and there was quite an age difference between them all. And the older kids looked at his parents in a completely different light than he did. You know, his mom and dad were his heroes. But the older kids really didn't treat them well. Um, and he holds that so deeply. And we were talking, and I, and I said to him, I'm like, you have to find a way to forgive them. I'm like, you don't have to call them. You don't have to call, say to them, I forgive you. Forgive within your heart, your parents, they've passed, right? They've forgiven. You should also forgive. It's like the people that I've been with, one was a horrible abuser. One was a horrible cheater. I've forgiven them. Doesn't mean I picked up the phone. You know why? Because I know karma plays its part. And I don't need to be concerned with what they're doing in their lives. I just need to be concerned about my own life and those that I love. So anyways, forgiveness. I just find it interesting that Sam and I just had this long discussion yesterday about that. I am willing to release old resentments so that I may enjoy my life. I have a feeling that's a little bit of what the eight of swords and the nine of swords is joy interesting you have joy and optimism which are very very connected energies so joy by enjoying this moment so is the three of wands by the way by enjoying this moment i am giving thanks to god for my life joy it's being able to find joy in the smallest of things and finding gratitude. And sometimes that's simply just waking up in the morning. Optimism. I expect good things to happen. And they do. Wow. That's a whole different way of looking at life. Eight of Swords. I expect, I expect bad things to happen. And I'll be damned. They do. But now that I've freed myself. I expect good things to happen. And they do. Wow. A lot. Mercy. Mercy. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. But towards yourself, don't forget about you. Children. Wow. I feel like that pulls us right into your past life. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive changes for them and me. Some of you may be called into that field. And now you know that that's what your soul wanted. But I also feel like it's tying back to the little boy and the little girl. Gratitude. Well, I literally just talked about gratitude. As I notice and appreciate my blessings, 
I open the door to more of God's gifts, gratitude, hope. You literally have hope on the table, hope. I trust that God has, has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. In a way, it is saying, get out of the way and let God do his handiwork. Home. Home is where the heart is. Home. I trust and follow my divine guidance about my home. Amen. Amen over this whole reading. Wow. That's a lot of cards on the table, first of all. But wow, I feel like what a story they just told. And I don't know about you, but I feel every bit of it. I feel every bit of it. I feel very clear with what I'm reading. Um, though I know there's different avenues for different people, and you just have to take that in consideration. You know what I mean? Um, but like I feel like the majority of you are that little girl, male or female, or you're that little boy, but I feel more you're that little girl. And again, I feel like that little girl, she's fearless. Why is she fearless? Because she felt the protection. She felt the protection of her angels. Bring that into this lifetime. Be fearless. Be optimistic. Have a forgiven have a forgiving heart. And be grateful. And I know some are going to be like, well, right now, I don't have a lot to be grateful for. But there's got to be something. All right. I'm going to let that reading be, guys. Um, man, I almost didn't do this reading today. And I am so thankful that I did. I am just so thankful that I did. I feel like this is, this was in divine timing. And I now know why in the twin flame reading, my intuition was ignited to do this reading. It took two days, but maybe that's exactly what it needed. I'm just going to let that be. You know, it's interesting because I know there's going to be a lot of people who don't see the reading. And I feel like this is the type of reading that can help so many. Once they can get beyond that eight and nine of swords and they can open themselves up to their spirituality, I feel like this shows you really just the power of what can be, however it may be for you. So... I want to really thank those who share my videos because I feel like I just get this feeling and I, and I never say this, but I just get this feeling that there may be some people that this reading is going to fit like a glove who may not see it. So I guess I'm just going to put that in divine's hands that those who are meant to see it will find it. And I'm just going to trust. And I'm going to thank you guys. I love you guys so much. Um, I love doing these readings for you in all the different formats. Really, I do. I, I, To me, they're like movies. You know, they are the story of your lives. And I feel like it's your soul just letting me in, giving me a glimpse into your life. And I thank you for that. Um, I love you guys so much. I really do. So I'm going to let that be. Amen. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.